take us through that that first topic that you discussed, uh, owning your niche. How did you guys discover um, your niche in terms of shipmates, shipmates and what that was going to be all about? Yeah, um, well, we didn't. It was really spontaneous, as probably everyone knows. We sort of came out of nowhere. Um, I mean, we had that. We, we were doing the quizzes early days, but that was just a bit of fun. Like, we didn't really know where that was going to like take us, or like we didn't really have a long term vision of like oh, how this could blow us up. We were just having fun and ended up growing a bit. So we got to like ten k followers, and that sort of like got us a bit interested in potentially oh you know what if we make a video and it blows up and you know you look i think we, we'd probably maxed out the amount of followers and views we could get from that particular niche which was the the quizzes in the car like we'd sort of <laughs> done like that many videos that with different types of you know reactions and stuff like that and then sort of got to a point where we we're like yeah we're probably maxed out in this niche so we tried to mm. you know it was a completely different mode. audience as well i think we had like I think it was like 90% female that were watching yeah. our quizzes. And then now it's like 99% male watching our sports stuff. So like it's it's pretty pretty weird to see how, how it changes the demographic to the kind of content you're doing. And yeah, as soon as we came into this sort of lane, like it just blew up. And like now our you know demographic is like 18 to 35-year-old males. What are some of your, your big tips that you guys have found um, that really increase your numbers in terms of engagement point of view on social media? Um, I think probably li- listening to your followers, um, like it was, it was quite easy with us actually, cause you know, we'd post the commentary video and then the top comment is usually like, it's always the most liked comment. And it's always like a request of, to do something. So it was like pretty easy for us to go, oh yep, there's our next video, like right there. And we just reply to the comment and then just keep that cycle going. So, yeah. So listening to them and, um, just, yeah, again, probably staying Staying in your lane, you can like we know where where sports comedy take the piss kind of that that lane, and we've got the commentary stuff and um, you know you, you can you can find ways to keep it keep it fresh. Like you can do the same sports stuff, but you can do it in a different way. And like it, you might be doing different trends, or you might be doing skits, and you can change it up and keep it fresh that way. Yeah, um, as you mentioned, with that keeping content brand friendly, uh, and why is that important from a um, you know, financial point of view, if you want to develop money opportunities as a social influencer. Um, well, yeah, you want to keep it. You want to keep it brand friendly. If your brands don't want to, like, they want to be able to work with you and and know that they can trust you and be really good to work with. Yeah. Um, you know, we we see. It's. I think. Yeah. What's been special with us is is obviously being really brand friendly. Hence, why like we're able to be on like a TikTok ad and. Um, work with like Telstra and all these big, big, big brands, and um, yeah, obviously, and not, having having that audience of you know young kids, and also it's pretty wide demographic. So there's young kids that come up to us, and then our DMs are flooded with you know um, middle aged men like loving their sport. So um, yeah, being brand friendly with all of them has, has helped sort of just you know get those those invites of brands and stuff like that, and. And for those uh, tuning in that are managing different um, social media following as well as searchable content like YouTube and podcasts, blog posts, whatever it might be, how do you guys go about breaking up your content? Is it creating one video that you spit out to all the platforms or do you have separate mm. content creation for, for specific um, At the moment, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's definitely just one video that goes on all platforms. They sort of seem to be – they perform differently on each platform platform that's for sure so i mean we're finding instagram probably kicks off quicker but then i don't know over the over the course of a week tiktok performs better so right. um but mm-hmm. yeah the content at the moment that we're doing suits youtube shorts instagram and tiktok so yeah and we were a bit late to the party with youtube as well like we we do have a, a plan on starting the youtube content probably in the next couple of months and really having a crack at it and what about content creation? How do you guys go about it? Do you do it separately, then come together at the end of the week or the start of the week and then, you know, filter what you're going to publish, what you're not? Uh, talk us through how you guys work together as brothers because I imagine that would have its yeah. strengths but also have its challenges. Yeah, definitely. I think it probably has more strengths than yeah. challenges. Um, you know, we've got like a whole desktop full of ideas and stuff and it's about picking like what's relevant for the time. Um, you talk about getting that engagement and it's definitely – something to do with relevance and you know for example we we posted a tiktok at the start of the week relating to the 
Bulldogs Fremantle game and that did really well just because it's relevant. So um, if you have an idea and, or a trend going around, if you can match it with relevance to the time, then that's a big ticket. Um, and we've got ideas in the bank like, and we know when we want to post those ideas. So like the sort of the, the timeliness is massive. Like we might have a really good idea and be like, okay, we'll post that in this time and in this time. Like right now, AFL is like hot and it's only got a couple more weeks left. So we're just grinding that out and then um, we, we've got ideas lined up for like cricket, golf, like all these other sports. So um, yeah, the, the content bank's ready to go.